Today we celebrate the feast of the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, not to be confused with the feast of the presentation of our Lord in the temple on February 2nd, which is also the feast of the purification of Mary. And although the feasts are distinct, they are related. We celebrate the feast on February 2nd as a part of the cycle of Christmas in which Our Lady and St. Joseph bring Jesus to the temple to fulfill the law by which the firstborn male must be bought back with a sacrifice in commemoration of the fact that God passed over, the angel of death passed over the homes of those whose houses were marked with the blood of the lamb during the Passover uh, in Egypt. And it is also in fulfillment of the law by which the woman, after having given birth, would have to be purified. Of course, Jesus and Mary neither needed to be bought back or purified, but they fulfilled the law in obedience and also um, brought to fulfillment what the temple and the sacrifices in the temple and the Passover and all the purifications signified. But the feast we celebrate today on November 21st it comes before, historically, the presentation of our Lord in the temple. When Our Lady was three years old, our tradition says that her parents, because Our Lady was enlightened uh, as the Immaculate Conception, as the one chosen by God to be the mother of Jesus, she was enlightened to know that God wished her to remain a virgin and to dedicate herself entirely to the service of the Lord. So at the age of three, she was brought to the temple and there presented as a kind of gift to God at the temple. And there she lived with the other virgins in preparation for uh, her mission, which she had not received yet. But God in his providence brought her to the temple so that she would have this period of preparation. The thing we need to remember in both these feasts is what the temple and the temple sacrifices signified. You know, when God gave the temple to Moses through the, initially through the, um, the tabernacle, the tent and the Ark of the Covenant, he told them, he told Moses to make the temple and the Ark according to the pattern which he saw in heaven. And Moses did this and the Ark of the Covenant led the people of Israel through the desert and God manifested his glory to them in the presence of the Ark, manifesting it in uh, the visible cloud by day and fire by night. And when the Ark came to rest and they put it in the tabernacle, God's cloud of glory came to dwell over the Ark. The same happened when they built the temple, when they put the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies. God's glory cloud came and filled the temple. And, uh, and, and people loved Jerusalem. They went to Jerusalem. They made pilgrimage there because of God's presence. It was the kingdom of it King, uh, it was the city of David where the king dwelt, but that's not why Jerusalem was important. The reason, the, the reason the king lived there is because God lived there in this unique way. After the, uh, the, at the time of the Babylonian exile, the ark was removed from the temple because they, the Jews didn't want it to fall into the hands of the pagans. So they removed it from the temple and, and after that it was lost. And a whole genre of, of literature and movies have been created around trying to find the ark. Um, and so when Our Lady was brought to the temple and when Jesus was brought to the temple years later, the ark was not there. The temple was empty and the, and the sacrifices continued in the temple without uh, there being the presence of our Lord's glory. His visible presence in the cloud was no longer there. So Our Lady was there. Our Lady came there and she came as the one who fulfills all the promises. She was the one that was signified by the ark of the covenant, she was the true ark. You might say that she is the temple that God made with his own hands. You know, at the end of scripture, when St. John looks 
into the heavens and he sees the clouds part and looks into the heavens and sees the temple opened and the Ark of the Covenant present there, what he's looking at is Our Lady because in the next passage, in chapter 12 of the Apocalypse, he sees the woman clothed with the sun. And there's a reason that we believe this. You know, in the old Ark of the Covenant, there was the, um, the tablets of the covenant given to Moses. There was the manna and there was the rod of Aaron. And in the new Ark of the Covenant, we have the new covenant, not written on stone, but written in the heart of man. And we have the living bread, not the manna that f fell down from heaven that only gave a limited kind of, of life and sustenance, but we have the true and living bread that comes down from heaven. And those who eat of this bread will live forever. And the true priesthood, not the rod of Aaron who was a, just a figure and a shadow of the priesthood that was to come, but we have the high priest, the priest and victim who offers himself on the cross and in the holy sacrifice of the mass. This is what Our Lady brought into the temple on the feast of, that we commemorate on the feast of the presentation on February 2nd. But all that happens because Our Lady was prepared, because God made her the temple of the Lord out of, you know, with his own hands, according to his own plan, and she was not a shadow like the, the temple and the tabernacle of the Old Testament. She was the fulfillment, and she brought, brought the fulfillment of all of our hopes and dreams into the, into the temple with the holiness that God had bestowed on her, and later, uh, with Jesus in her womb. And so on this feast, we celebrate the, the purity and the holiness of Our Lady, uh, and we wish to imitate her by following her into the temple, which for us is the church in, the holy, in a particular way, the holy sacrifice of the mass. And we ask that we might have her purity and her dedication to God's covenant, to his uh, work of redemption, particularly in our, in our own personal lives. We, we ask that we might be purified, that we might be holy, that we might have her virginal integrity, the virginity of our Lord, the stupendous miracle by which she became the mother of Jesus. You know, Jesus was conceived virginally and born virginally from Our Lady, is a sign of God's power and the holiness to which all of us are called. Not all of us are called to a life of celibacy, but all of us are called to heroic virtue, to live a life of sacrifice, to live a life completely dedicated to God. And so on this feast day, we turn to her and ask that we might be what St. Paul calls, calls God's architecture. We are the building that God is making and it happens through the cornerstone, which is Jesus Christ and the holy sacrifice of the mass. And through Our Lady, who is the temple of the Lord, and the Ark of the Covenant. We invoke her presence now as we prepare to receive Jesus in this great sacrament, in this great sacrifice.